Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome back. Good evening to you. Good evening, Anda. You overtook Peter today. Good evening, good evening. Um, good evening, Tiamo. Good to see you. Uh, good evening, Anda. Good evening, Tiamo. Good evening, Ask Priscilla. Good evening, Ask Priscilla. It's good to see you. Just sharing the broadcast. Uh, yes. Um, Good evening, Aspunzile. Good evening, women of God, Punzile Skande. It's good to see you. Uh, good evening, Nangueto. Oh, good evening, Pumi. Good evening, Innocentia. Good evening to you. Good evening, Nangleto. Good evening. It's good to see good evening, you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Jane. Good evening. So good to see you. Good evening, Miriam. Honey. Good evening. Oh, I've already said good evening. We've already said good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening in Essentia, not great. Good evening. Good evening, Jane, Miriam, Faith. Good evening, Flora. Good evening, Dingy Way. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining in. Good evening, Ding. Good evening, Flora. Good evening, Bongiwe. Good evening, Bongiwe. Good to see you. Bongiwe, I'm not sure if we've seen you before. If we have, welcome back. If we have not, welcome. It's good to have you here with us. Um, yeah, we love to have you here with us. And you are at the right place at the right time. You will testify. You will testify. Hi, Nungledo. Awesome. That's great to, to see. That's great to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Thank you. Yes, we appreciate that. Good evening, we below. Good evening, welcome back. Ah, okay, awesome, brilliant. Thank you, Nungleto. Thank you for the invite. Thank you for that. Good evening, Lesejo. Good evening, Francina. Good evening, Gea. Good evening, Lee. Boys. Um, if you can please just share the broadcast with as many people as you can. Yes, thank you so much for those who've already shared as well. All right. Um, 
Uh, we're going to hand over very soon to Pastor Mike. Yes. And thank you so much. You know, you guys have been so consistent joining in throughout the week. We really do appreciate that. Um, Pastor Sandy, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Good evening from Botswana. Good evening from Botswana. Good evening. Thank you for joining in. Agani, good evening to you. Snay and Litemba. Good evening to you guys. Yes. Please greet Litemba for me. <laughs> if he's not watching, please say, tell him I said hi. And good evening to you. Kanya. And the baby. <laughs> Asante Kanya. Uh, good, good evening, Malebuho. Good evening, Joy. You know, Joy doesn't know this yet, but he and I are likely to be best friends sometime in life. Mighty God. At some, he doesn't know it yet, but <laughs> there is an appointed time for that. Oh, good evening, God. Joy. Good to see you here, man. Uh, good evening, Peter. We did say good evening to Peter. Peter, but, no, Peter, Peter is specifically oh, maybe mentioning was, that he is oh late. yes yes because yes he's yes yes the he's first usually one. the guy. No, good evening peter good evening peter <laughs> oh no joy i see you've got that foresight no i'm glad to hear that man so good to, to have you here thank you so much for joining in good evening Hi, Tehan. Good evening, Tehan. good evening to these old men of yeah. god good evening to you good evening to you so Tabisa and I used to go to the same church. Shortly after I got born again, we used to go to the same church. Such a powerful minister of God. You know, this is the first person I actually heard who got me into knowing, oh, so God actually speaks. The Holy Spirit actually speaks. It was Tabisa who ministered that. Like, I still remember that sermon like it was yesterday. Wow. You know, one of the very few that I remember from that time, sure. you know, but yeah, Tabisa was really the first, in fact, the first person to even conscientize me to the fact that we are kings, that when God says he is the king of kings, the kings to which he's kings, or oh, he's king over. Sorry. Come on, Tabisa. It's us. Wow. So, man of God, you really contributed so much in my life. You know, there's so many so many things that you you did so many things that you said that still to this day you know um stuck with me wow. to this day so yeah welcome and thank you so much for joining in wow that's beautiful yeah you taught me that the holy spirit is real actually wow. it, it, i think you know many people had said it maybe i don't know before but i think through you i saw the reality of that relationship you know even the way you ministered it was so personal that yeah i think you were just ministering from that place of intimacy with god so thank you so much men of god thank you so much sure. wow hallelujah yes holy ghost thank you lord mm. all right um we're gonna hand over to pastor michael in a moment and um, there's a testimony to share so um we received thank a you testimony oh, thank yesterday you. oh yes of course beautiful. love you so much yeah. yes lord Amen. Amen. thank you lord jesus yeah. good, good, evening, good, good, evening, good evening good evening good to see you which also reminds me Good evening to the people who are not commenting. I, I think I constantly need to remind myself. It's easier to kind of remember, you know, but sometimes after the live, you get a text from someone saying, hey, listen, you know what? Um, that ministered to me. That really, um, it's, it's changing lives, changing lives. 
Hi, Alan. Good evening, Alan. Good to see you. Welcome. I think it's the first time we see Alan. Yeah. Welcome, Alan. It's good to see you. It's good to Great have you. Great to see you, Alan. Alan. Yeah. And we do like to say to people that we are seeing for the first time, you're at the right place, at the, at right, the right time, and you will testify. Yeah. Good evening to you, and thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, good, good evening, good Kay. Good evening, Kay. So good to good have evening. you here. Good evening. Olive. Good evening, Olivia. Good oh, evening, my. Olivia. You know, we oh, yeah. Olivia, right? Good evening. I think it's you're the only Olivia I know. <laughs> <laughs> good evening to you. Good oh, evening. Oh, man, evening. it's so good to see you. It's yeah. so good to see you. Thank you so sure. much for that. It's been a while. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. Good evening, Karen. Good evening, Karen. Good evening. Okay, good evening. Um, Tembegile. Good evening, good evening. Yes. We're, we're always happy to see that. <laughs> we're happy to see that, Karen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Ah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The, guys, do you see what sharing does? Yeah. Do you see what sharing does? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saying that, Alan. God bless yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. And, and to the person who shared person, with you. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you to the person who shared the video with you. It's live with you. Yeah. Good evening, Good evening Tolo. Tolo. All right. So... In the two minutes before we 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 welcome um, Pastor Mike, I would like to share a testimony. Somebody sent a testimony they requested to be um, to remain anonymous. Woman of God, good evening. Um, good evening, good evening, Woman Hazel. Of God. It's good to see you again. Okay, so someone shared a testimony and they requested to. Um, to, to remain anonymous, right? This person um, had been experiencing a lot of challenges. Okay, in fact, let me read the very first sentence of the text. <laughs> the first sentence of the text um, says, um, hi, sister, Pastor Michael said we must expect something this week. And it has happened for me. Like just, just reading that for me was like, okay, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So she says, Pastor Michael said we must expect something this week and it has happened for me. And then she went on to share. So she's had some challenges at work, especially with the uh, manager or the leader, like the senior manager um, that she works under at work. And this is someone who has been going out of their way to make sure that this person's time at work and their work experience really, that it's, it's not a pleasant one, you know? So she says there are two things that happened. The first one is they were uh, told to apply for leave, right, by a certain time. And when she applied for her leave, which is all the way in September, you know, in an open week, it was declined or denied um, without any um, substantial reason, really, or any communicated reason. And um, then there was a follow-up saying, listen, you need to book your leave, you know. And um, when that request came in, she replied to the email and said, can we please first confirm the 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 september one you know before i can book for december or whenever can we confirm the the september one and the manager forwarded the email to other senior people and said just look at how my staff is speaking to me you know when i give them orders or um request this is how they reply and um you can imagine what that would do I'm saying that because consistently over the years, this person um, has had a track record of making things difficult for the person testifying at work, you know, and, um, you know, using their power, their authority, trying to use systems as well at work to make sure that 
this person is seen in a bad light and all of that. And that was the first thing. The second thing is that, and I'm going to, to give the testimony for both. The, the second thing is that um, she, um, the second thing is that there was some kind of reshuffling that was taking place at work. Things were going to be re-evaluated. People's income was going to be affected. Now your performance was, I mean, now your um, income was also going to be graded by how you perform different levels, just systematic things, right? That um, sometimes companies will use to kind of reduce people's income. And so because this, um uh manager I had put in like a, there was a letter in this person's folder that gave a negative impression of this person's performance basically um with the intent to communicate poor performance so that it could affect this person's income as this these changes are taking place now with these two things the first thing that happened for this person and what they're testifying about is that firstly, um, for whatever reason, after they had forwarded the email to other to their seniors, you know, to say, oh, look at how they are responding to me. Somehow they were forced to approve that those leave days that they had um, declined before, where the, the, the request was rejected before. And um, so that was the first Thing. You know, God just made it in, in, in spite of the fact that there was malice behind forwarding this email. They, in turn, needed to make sure that that week was given to this person. So that was breakthrough number one. Glory to Jesus. But the second thing is, with the readjusting of things, even though there was communication with the intent to, to basically paint this person in a bad light at work, their income systematically it was found that their income actually has to increase instead of decreasing and it had to increase by a significant amount you know and so uh it was just i was so excited to hear this so we just want to say glory to god appreciate god for that because what that said to me is it doesn't matter at this point what the enemy tries to do it's going to work out for your good it doesn't matter which area it's in. It's going to work out for your good. It brought the song um, to mind that says, what the enemy may, meant for evil, God has turned around for my good. You know, so be encouraged even as you're here. Be encouraged when, you know, we've been receiving. Just be anticipating your own testimony. You know, wait to see the things. I mean, this was said in this week. It's not even Sunday yet, and the, the testimonies are starting to flock in. I also want to encourage you, if you do have a testimony, don't sit with it. You know, it's going to encourage so many people. I personally was so encouraged by the testimony of this person. So glory to God for that. And yeah, without any more waste of time, we're yeah, going to welcome. Up, up, but before, let me just say, uh, Kuto, I think, is joining in for the first time. Kuto actually come from, we come from the same neighborhood. We're probably come like on, two streets me. apart from each other. So welcome, welcome, Frank. welcome it's good Kuto. to have you here. And welcome also to Christopher. Welcome, Always a pleasure having you. All right. Thank you so much. So we are going to welcome um, Pastor Michael Paswana. Once again, glory oh. to Jesus. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> shalom, yeah. shalom, saints. Wow. All right, let's let's get to it. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you so much. All right. All right. All right. Blessings. Shalom, 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 saints. Uh, greetings. This beautiful, wonderful evening. I want to send my special greetings to. Uh, our host, um, the apostle and the prophetess, thank you so much for putting up such a beautiful uh, platform, such a push. I myself, um, I'm encouraged and I'm, in, I'm strengthened. And also I want to greet everybody who's tuning in, listening to, 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 to us. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege. We do not take it for granted 
that you take your time um, just to listen to what the Lord is saying. And uh, let me to also appreciate my wife who, who, who who's at the back uh, stage. Yes, uh, me shouting and preaching this evening. Uh, yes, so thank you so much. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our lives. We bless you, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for such remarkable doors that you're opening in this season. We thank you, Father, for the testimonies that we have already had in the name of our Lord <clears throat> and Savior, Jesus Christ. We really appreciate you, Father, that we are still yet to realize more of your glory and your grace. We are yet to realize more of an opening of doors in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, amen and amen. Now, this evening, most importantly, I'm just trusting God for more, for more. Uh, for more if 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 we're in church if we're in church i would say look at your neighbor and say i, I trust i'm trusting god for more i'm trusting god for more i'm trusting god for more for more for more for more i'm trusting god for more there's so much that god is willing to do in this season so i'm trusting god for more i'm trusting god for expansion I'm trusting God for increase. I'm trusting God uh, uh, to bless me. I'm trusting God to bring me into realizing all that he has spoken concerning my life and my destiny. And such a time as this that God has given us with such a great uh, cloud of glory, we take advantage of such an atmosphere like the woman with the issue of blood. She took it <clears throat> upon herself to approach Christ and said, if only I can touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, I will be healed. And she received her healing. The Canaanite woman who went to Christ and say, my daughter is demon possessed. Won't you heal her? She got the healing for her daughter. So we just want to get into a space of God. We trust that God is in the space, wherever you are, in your house, in your room, whatever, wherever you are, listening to us through your headsets, laptop, just, just declare and say, Lord, I'm trusting you for more. Lord, I'm trusting you for more. I'm trusting. Just sincerely pray. Pray just for a few seconds and say, Lord, I'm just trusting you for more. Let's just pray for just a few seconds. Lord, we're trusting you for more. We're trusting you for more. We're trusting you, Lord, for more. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. More blessings. More increase. More da sita la bashanda. We trust you, Lord, for increase. Zira bahaya. Dereko sekeria de sharia zuka. Uya shela haya dashia brade kesete. We trust you, Father. Brakia dashe. Mihiaria zota. In my finances, I'm trusting you for more. I'm trusting you, Lord, in property. I'm trusting you, Father, for more in ministry. I'm trusting you, Father, for more in capacity. Help me have the capacity to carry what you've called me to carry. Lord, I'm trusting you for more influence and affluence. I am trusting you. Hey, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I'm trusting you for more. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you and we bless you. We trust you for more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to I I just want to declare a blessing over i think it's jane i just saw jane she's on youtube i want to declare god's blessing upon your life uh jane shake i think if i'm, if I'm not mistaken i want to declare god's blessing upon your life may god shower you with more may god bring you into a space of abundance may god bring you into a space of increase may god open remarkable doors for you may god shower you with so much favor and grace in this season may god bring you into a place that flows with milk and honey a place of the rest of god may you advance beyond the borders of limitation may you advance beyond the camp of limitation may you break camp and advance to the next season in the name of jesus christ and i speak a blessing of a thousand times more. May God multiply everything around you a thousand times more. May your money multiply 
a thousand times more. May your influence multiply a thousand times more. May wisdom be given to you a thousand times more. May knowledge be given unto you a thousand times more. May the spirit of grace and the anointing flow strongly in your life in such a remarkable way. May God bless your hands that whatever you touch will turn into a blessing. You're blessed going in and you're blessed going out. I bless you, Jane. I bless you this evening. I speak God's blessing. In Jesus' name, may God give you your heart's desire in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. In Jesus' name, God bless you, Jane. Amen. And I just want to also quote a scripture in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 11, if I'm not mistaken. It says, may the God of your forefathers bless you a thousand times more or increase you a thousand times more. We're going to shout and say, God is increasing me a thousand times more. That's a huge figure. Imagine imagine with the amount of money you're earning at the current level and you declare a thousand times more. Imagine how far God can stretch you. So tonight is going to be a night of stretching, a night of expansion, a night where we realize an expansion of the kingdom of God because the, the, the order of the kingdom of God, it's multiplication, it's increase. We need to get into the state where we realize the supernatural power of God. I'm, I'm to speak to people who have not experienced great breakthroughs. I want to speak to people who have been speaking bits and pieces of breakthroughs. Some, somehow, you are more like a God. When is my time going to come? This evening, we declare and decree and say that there's more for you. There's more for you. A thousand times more. A thousand times more. God bless you a thousand times more in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I want us now to agree we're all going to agree we're all going to agree we are agreeing that there is grace in the season there is grace in the season for multiplication for multiplication for increase there's grace. More is added into my trust. More is added into my space. God is adding, adding. He's adding. Mm, come on, somebody. This evening, we declare that there is grace in the I pray this evening also that may today mark a new beginning of an open door to to a new season. May this day be a bridge of you crossing over into the land that flows with milk and honey. May this be a day where it introduces you to healing, breaking away from depression and all that is holding you back. May the Lord God Almighty bless you a thousand times more. We speak in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That which you could not do, may God give you grace to do it. That which you could not reach, May God give you grace to reach to it. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray and I declare, I'm praying for somebody, I'm praying for a supernatural healing, someone who's afflicted with sickness. I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are healed. I hear the Lord say there are people who are believing God to build, to build a house. It's either you're building a house or you're going to build a house. It's either you're trusting God for land. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, a supernatural supply. God is going to bring a supernatural supply. God is going to provide for the project. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I declare and I decree. Shatora da Mia dose da brekele suya, mare da subre kela da sia la croda, era dia sobra kala dia seting, iria sumbe, iria di sukaria da lesica, masendo o yazakana masanda la caria dele, hula bashakala manderia saya, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, and I pray for someone who who might have lost uh, uh, an income, source of income. I'm praying for grace uh, that may God take you even further than where you are at. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Masolo de Shulu Oriadabrasia In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we declare and we decree. May joy come into your space. May joy fill your heart this evening. In Jesus' name, we pray. 
Amen and amen and amen and amen. God bless you, sister. Yes, Alan, we pray for grace for finances that you'll be able to publish your books. We're praying that as you publish your books, may your books be that kind of an impartation that this generation needs of great knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. May God pour oil on your writing, say, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, this evening, I just want us to stretch ourselves a bit and more strongly. I'm going to speak more precise and I'm going to speak strongly into our lives. And I want us to believe and trust God. I assured you from the beginning that something is going to happen. And we all have a portion of a blessing that God is going to shower upon our lives. We are going to experience that kind of a remarkable shifting God is fighting for you. Remember the person who um, spoke about receiving a better pay and also in the way in the workplace. Remember we spoke that someone is, is going to experience God defending them and fighting for them in the workplace. That's it. God has done it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we are trusting God for more. So this night, we're going to trust God for more. Today and today and tomorrow, we're going to trust God for more. Last year, when I went to Namibia, ministering to in, in Namibia, uh, on, on a Saturday in the afternoon, there's a lady I gave a prophetic word uh, according to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The word was, you're going, I, I said to her, the Lord is saying, the, the borders are being opened. You're about to travel nations. And she has never had a passport before. And I said, God is saying, you're going to travel nations. There's an opening for you to travel nations. Later on, within an hour or two, she received a call. Imagine, out of duty, she received a call from her boss. Her boss said to her, do you have a passport? And she says, no, I don't have a passport. Why? She said, and he said, I, want, I have appointed you as one of the people who must travel to Zimbabwe. Imagine, within an hour or so, there was a supernatural occurrence that fulfilled the prophetic word that we spoke in that place. So I want to speak this evening with so much, so much surety and so much conviction that you are about to take a shift into realizing what God has called you for, what God has pushed you to. You're going to realize it in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Many of us are trusting God for supply. Many of us are trusting God for a push and increase. So this evening in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to to come to pass. Remember when the Kai said to Esther, if you remain silent in this time, help will come from the other side. Even though there are people whom God has assigned that they must help you, if they don't help you, help will come from the other side. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I declare and I pray that it's going to come to pass in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh Father. Mm. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, let us just um, go back a bit from day number one. We spoke about in connection or relation to understanding the kingdom of God. We spoke more briefly and said, in understanding the kingdom of God, we have to understand that the kingdom of God comes through the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit shares the whole revelation knowledge of the kingdom of God, we realize that Christ is the reality of the kingdom of, of God. Without Christ, we cannot understand the depth and the fullness of what the kingdom of God stands for. So the manifestation of Christ was the introduction, introduction of what the kingdom is. So upon receiving Jesus Christ is receiving the kingdom. When we receive Christ as Lord and Savior, we have received eternal kingdom. We're in the eternal kingdom of our Father. God becomes our Father. Jesus becomes our Savior. And the Holy Spirit becomes our helper. So now the Holy Spirit, as Jesus actually spoke to the disciples in the book of John. He says to them, the Spirit of God will only speak, not from his accord. He will speak according to what we say to him. So the Spirit does not develop his own language or own speech or any kind of a thing that comes from himself. The Bible says uh, he searches the deeper thoughts of God and he makes them known to us. Those are mysteries that come through the Holy Spirit. And most importantly, I did emphasize I did emphasize, I did emphasize that salvation comes through 
the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that prompts us and convicts us of a need of a Savior. So now for us to come into saying Jesus is Lord, it is by the Holy Spirit. Nobody can say Jesus Christ is Lord if it is not by the Holy Spirit. So the, the significance and importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives plays a major role on how we get to see Christ in his fullness, how we get to understand the Father in his own supremacy and own uh, power. So we need to get to a point whereby we are so closer to the Holy Spirit because being closer to the Holy Spirit, it's more of gaining revelation knowledge. So I need to have intimacy with him. I need to spend time with him. I need to allow him to show me the Father. His true and responsibility is always to bring into a place of glory. After all, he is the spirit of glory. So he is always going to bring you into a place of glory. The Father, the Spirit of God is, is going to enable you to see the whole concept of what the kingdom of God stands for in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we need to understand that this evening that we have been given the Holy Spirit as someone who brings us into the kingdom. He brings us into knowing what we have been given he brings us into understanding the mysteries, the inheritance that we've been given through Christ who died on the cross. So he will always re remind us every time we forget our significance, our identity, who we are in the kingdom. The Spirit of God will always bring us into being reminded that you are not just a nobody. You are of a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar nation, a people belonging to God, called out of darkness into his marvelous light, declaring what God has said in that space. So you are of royalty. In your nature, you are of royalty. We spoke about, we have received the spirit of adoption, meaning that now we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. What is, is, what is of Christ also belongs to me. The same power operating in Christ is the same power that has been given unto me. So God has actually now endorsed me to be a carrier of the supernatural. So at any time I can engage in the supernatural power of God, I can bring the full governance of the kingdom of God in my space. And we spoke yesterday about prayer, where Christ then teaches the disciples about prayer. He says to them, when you pray, you shall say, our Father who is in heaven, cannot be the name, the kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we have the access and the privilege to engage with the heavens. We have a privilege to call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says that the, 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 the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and they are saved. And when we call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. So when we call upon Jesus Christ, there is a guarantee of a response from heaven. When we call upon the name of the Lord, God is going to respond with so much agency. So we get to this understanding that anything that is limiting us from walking in a supernatural power of God, we can be stopped by calling simply upon the name of Jesus Christ. Then we also spoke about uh, the difference between the nature of God and the nature that we live in. The nature we live in is controlled by what we call uh, uh, chronos. Chronos, it means the time that we live in, the seasons and times. Uh, the times whereby people will say, in order for you to become this particular thing, you will need to spend this particular years. But in the, in the Kairos time, it actually invades what the natural time says. With Abraham and Sarah, they could not give birth uh, to a child because their, their child bearing age had already passed biologically. That's the chronos. It is written in the natural. But now when we engage with the heavens, we are allowing the heavens to invade our natural state. So in many a times, we don't succumb to what is happening around us. We succumb to and yield. In fact, we yield to the heavens. So the issue of money is not an issue to the heavens. The issue of money is an issue in the natural space. The issue of lack is not an issue in the realm of the spirit. It's an issue only in my space. In my space there is lack, but in the space of God there is an activation and a push and a release of what we call 
Kairos time. You might feel you're beyond and be and behind time, or you're not in your season of grace and a season of elevation, but you have to get into a place of engaging in a spirit realm where there is the supernatural counsel of God that God has already ordained that nothing shall be impossible if you believe. So you get into that understanding that the Holy Spirit then reveals the kingdom. In him revealing the kingdom, as we said, he brings a testimony of who God is to you. So before the manifestation of the supernatural, there has to be active of what you call faith. Faith must be provoked in prayer. Faith is not saying that I have to say it to believe it. I have to hear it to believe it. So God has to speak to me in order for me to believe. That's what the Bible says. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So faith is of the supernatural. It's not of the natural. So faith is the ability to see beyond my current state. I am broke. I don't have connections. I don't have anything. But I have the ability to come into a place of ascending in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord, Jehoshaphat who was facing the Ammonites and the Amorites. When he heard of such a great army charging against him, the first thing he realized in the natural, he does not have an army that can stand against the Ammonites and the Amorites. But he remembered of the promise that God made to Solomon after he built the temple of God. God said, my eyes and my ears will always be on this temple whenever you come to pray I will bring I will bring deliverance so the first thing that Jehoshaphat did he did not gather resources and to bring people to say we are going to charge against this army he first inquired of the Lord because he understood that in inquiring of the Lord he is now moving from that natural state of things into a supernatural state of things because in the space of the kingdom there's an invasion of the supernatural so he understood that by my hand I cannot defeat the Ammonites. I cannot defeat the Amorites. I cannot come into a place of breakthrough by what I'm looking at. Don't look at what you do not have. Don't look at what you do not have. Look at what the kingdom is able to offer. The kingdom is able to offer the supernatural. The kingdom is able to bring you into a place of the supernatural. The problem is we always entertain things like, I don't have money. You will hear someone saying, before I can move to what God has called me to do, I need to first gather money. It's not faith. That's being carnal. You need to break away from being carnal and say, Lord, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to trust you. I don't have to start with money. I have to start with the conviction that you're going to come through. You're going to be there for me. You will never leave me nor forsake me. I don't have to hold back in a season of being released into following God because faith speaks of I don't have to have it all but I must have conviction of the heavens. I have to have the conviction that faith is what is going to take me through and bring me into my place of breakthrough. So the supernatural is what God has given unto us and it's what God is willing to bring into our state. So I don't have to look at my natural state. So prayer will always introduce me to a real of the supernatural. The more I dwell in prayer, the more testimony I have of the supernatural power of God. The supernatural power of God brings me into realization that nothing is impossible. I have to believe God for breakthrough. I need to believe God for finances. I need to believe God for the next season. I don't need to calculate my next line, my next move. I need to get into a place of saying yes, Lord, you will do it for me. Yes, Lord, you will give me breakthrough. I am trusting God in this season in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So in simplicity, what we are saying, as we also see David before he could pursue, when he came back to the camp and he saw everything was taken, the first thing he engaged in was not the pursuit. The first thing was the, the invasion of the kingdom of God. He had to go first into separation and say, Lord, if I pursue, will I gain victory? Then God released a word and said, surely when you pursue, you will get breakthrough. Before I take any step to the next level, I need to have the ability to be prophetic. I need to have the ability to speak prophetically and say my latter will be greater than my former. In my current state, I don't have money, but I'm speaking that next week by this time, I'm going to see a breakthrough. In fact, even tonight can be a time of breakthrough. It might be day wherever you're coming from, but have the ability to come into a place of being prophetic, to come into a place of declaration 
declaration because after every inquire of the Lord, there has to be a prophetic utterance which is like a stamp of authority that says if God says yes, nobody can say no. When God said let there be light, there was no force of power that could stand against what God has already spoken. When God said let there be this and that and that, there was no power that can resist the power of God. So in engaging in the supernatural, we have this conviction that as God speaks and I'm enabled to come into a place of a prophetic and speak what God is bringing me to, I can say next week by this time, I'm going to see a breakthrough. The heavens will back me up. Then next week by this time, I'm going to see the mighty hand of God. I can declare and say, I'm going to express provision now. God is my provider. Like Abraham, when he was mounting to Mount Moran, and the son asked him, where is the burnt offering that we have to to offer to the Lord? And the man of God said, the Lord shall supply for himself a burnt offering. I don't have the sacrifice. I don't have anything to sacrifice and give unto the Lord. But God himself provides God himself bring me to a place of realization. So this evening, I need to get to this understanding that the place of prayer is a strategic place. If I do not pray, I am lack, I'm lacking strategy. The Bible says Elijah was a mere man like us, like me and you. Yet he prayed and said, let it not rain for three and a half years. And it was so. Yet again, he came and said, let it not ra- let it rain for three years, for another for another time and it was so what am i saying we need to get into a realization that after we've inquired from the lord we have received an impartation for the supernatural we can then come into a place of speaking forth i can declare and decree and say father as far as i can sing i am going to possess in the name of our lord and Savior just christ now let me read the scripture briefly then we're going to pray. Oh, I feel glory. I feel the presence of God. I feel like there are people who have not experienced the supernatural power of God in essence. They only hear people speaking more about miracles and breakthroughs. And you're always uh, saying, Lord, why not me? Why am I not seeing this? And tonight I'm praying earnestly that may God show you. May God reveal miracles. May God shoot you to the next season of your life in the name of our Lord. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are people who feel like they are least and they are nobodies, but God is showering you with a blessing to increase you in Jesus' mighty name. I want to read briefly in the book of Genesis, chapter 5, chapter, chapter 13, uh, verse 14. The Bible says, And the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord has separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Verse 15 says, For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. And verse 17, arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I have given to you. Rise, walk the land through its width and its length for I have given to you. Father, we thank you for the reign of a word. We bless it in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Now, let me say this with so much sincerity. I'm going to give you an example, which is a testimony. Um, I've given you a number of testimonies, but I want to uh, ignite your faith on how we're going to pray. But I said this here, prayer is a place of strategy strategy in a sense of tapping into what God wants to do because prayer will always reveal the plans of God. So God will always bring into understanding how he operates. So now I am, I am, I'm just going to be more practical for some few minutes. Let's just say you are in a space where you don't have anything just for, 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 for a better example. You don't have anything You don't have one to even the most uh, simplest things that you feel uh, God is not going to answer you on. God is more precise. He's going to bring a breakthrough in that place. Now we read here God challenging Abraham. I'm I'm not going to give much context, but I'm going to give something that is more important that I want to address this evening. Uh, God now speaks to Abraham, obviously, after he parted ways uh, with Abraham. with 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 
with Lord. So God becomes strategic with him. He, 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 he shows him how the kingdom operates. Number one, the kingdom operates inside. There has to be an ability to see. You need to have the ability to see. You need to come into a place where the, the eyes of your understanding is enlightened. You must have the ability to see beyond your current situation. You must have the ability to see beyond lack. You must have the ability to see beyond uh, limitation. You must have the ability to see beyond the little that you have. Remember, there was a woman who went to the prophet and said, your servant, uh, my husband has died and has left us with all these debts. You see that? He has left us with all these debts and me and, and they're about to take my sons because of the debts that I have. And the man of God only asked a simple question. He said, what do you have in your house? So now she remembered that the only thing I see of great value is the last oil that is just remaining, a last drop probably of oil that is there. So God is then going to bring you into a place where he opens your eyes to see how you can just transform your life and bring it to the next season so now you cannot pursue what you don't see so we first see in the spirit realm <coughs> sorry about that so that's why the prophetic becomes very strategic because now the reality needs to be revealed to me i need to see in the spirit realm i need to be enabled to see. i need to be able to see beyond my current situation i need to, to see that's why vision becomes the greatest commodity you can have the biggest thing a person can ever have in their lifetime is vision it's not necessarily money yes money has the is a byproduct of making things come to pass but imagine a person with money and no vision they are a destruction but imagine a person with a vision a person with a vision means they have the ability to buy the future. When you have a vision, it means you have the ability to buy the future. Not only are you buying the future, you are buying the future for your next generation. Not only are you buying for your next generation, you are buying for the generation after the generation after that. That if God was to give you an opportunity to come back after a thousand years, you can still look back at what you started as something that God has done. Because remember, but God is generational. When God came to Moses, he said, I am that I am. And this is my name throughout all generations. So now God in his nature is generational God. So the first thing that God is always going to bring you to is always going to bring you into a revelation of where you're heading to. So now what does God do? God then now speaks to you beyond your current situation. You need to get to your ability to believe beyond your limitation. You need to find through until you get into a place whereby you can believe God beyond your current situation because your current situation cannot uh, can bring can bring you into despair and depression because you're looking at lack you're looking at uh, uh, no resources no connection but now God when he encounters you he will begin to reveal great things because now when God speaks to Abraham he says your descendants will be great there will be there will be many in number. So you see that. So what is God saying here? God is actually saying that now, I know that you are barren, but I'm speaking of descendants. See that that's vision. So now God is saying that now you need to have the ability to, to, to look and see beyond barrenness. Because barrenness come, brings you into a place of saying, I don't have the ability to give birth. I don't have the ability to bring things into existence. But now you need to be activated in the place of the supernatural where you begin to see beyond your current state. Because vision is not the beginning of having resources. Vision is the all concept of saying, I see the future. When you read the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk was complaining about how evil is, is prevailing, about how people who are evil, they're having their own way. They're able to take land from people. They're able to devastate generations. But God says, what will then bring a solution and a change and a shifting is when you have the ability to possess the future. If you get into a place of declaring a revelation that speaks of the future, that's why God says, write the vision down, proclaim it, speak of the future. He says, though it takes time, it will, it will come to pass. 
pass though it lingers it will come to pass so what is god saying he's saying that now your current status is not the same as the status that you're going to so you need to have the ability to get into a place where god enables you and actually helps you to see beyond what did you see this evening what is it that you see and perceive concerning your destiny write it down and make a declaration and say i am a man of god i am an apostle i'm called such a time as this god has called me to reach a hundred thousands of people i'm going to minister and pray and declare that i'm going to bring in souls to the kingdom of god you make that bold declaration you cause and create a demand from the heavens you must have the ability to sing help me to see lord Help me to see my future. Help me to see my tomorrow. Enable me, Lord. Open my eyes. Because God is saying here to, the, to, to, to Abraham, he says, as far as your eyes can sing, you shall possess. Then he says, uh, eastward, westward, southward, and northward. So what is God saying? That now, as far as your eyes can sing, I'm going to give you as a position. So now, if you limit how far you see, you're limiting how far God can take you. The example with the woman who had debt, the prophet said, go and borrow as many vessels as you can. Because there is an outbreak of an outpouring of provision so now what is god saying he's saying that now vision is capacity when you get into a place of a vision it means you're demanding and claiming and say i am and i have a capacity to take over a city let me give an example for instance you're in prayer and you're trusting and believing god to start a ministry or whatsoever you're doing in business so you need to make a declaration and say in my business i'm going to expand in the business that I have, either I'm selling clothes or I have a restaurant or I have a ministry, you declare and say, my restaurant will be in the greatest of the malls. You declare and say, one of the malls is Mall of Africa. You declare and say, in Mainland, I will occupy. In Cape Town, I will occupy. In Bloom Fountain, I will occupy. In Kabecha, I will occupy. In Limpompo, I will occupy. What are you saying? You're saying, Lord, you have given me the capacity to handle such an expansion. So God was saying, to Abraham, you have to demand capacity. At the moment, it's not uh, physically going to be given to you, but you need to have a capacity first in the spirit realm. You need to claim it in the spirit realm. In claiming it, you're declaring and saying the landscape of my influence goes as far as Limpopo, goes as far as Cape Town, goes as far as Egypt, goes as far as Europe. What is that? You're declaring and saying, Father, I am creating a demand and capacity to receive because the heavens are always pregnant with a release. God is always ready to release. God is always ready to bring a blessing. God is always ready to bring an outpouring. God is always ready to bring us into the next season. But God cannot bring us into another season unless he brings us into a place of capacity. I must possess capacity. What is your capacity this evening? Start expanding your sight. Start getting to a place of seeing. Because God cannot work in a place where there is no vision. God cannot work in a place where there are no vessels where he can pour. Because God says, go and borrow as many vessels. Because I'm about to open a factory of oil in your house. This factory in your, in your house is waiting for vessels. So what was the prophet saying? He's saying that in your house, there is potential for you to turn your house into a factory that will supernaturally Ah, that will supernaturally cause you to produce oil. You don't have the machinery. You don't have all the workers. But I'm telling you, the vessels will de will demand the little oil that you have uh, to keep on multiplying. Come on, am I speaking to somebody who will bring themselves to a place of capacity? Yes, I don't have, uh, but in the spirit realm, I am a giant. I'm not just a mere person. Ah, my vessel is too big. Uh, my space to receive is too big. Create a demand. The problem is we don't create a demand to receive. We don't 
Food. We don't create a demand to receive. And this evening, we need to create a demand to receive. Create capacity. Create it. Create it. Say, in my nature, I am a CEO. Oh, la basaya. You know that you are still at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom in your company. You know that who for me to mount up into that place of CEO, it will take many years. But you create capacity in prayer. Lord, make me ready. Make me a vessel. Make me a sanctuary. Matusaliya. Misokotonya masaliya. Messiah, Lord, push me to greatness. Lord, create a capacity in me for me to handle a position that is that great in the name of Jesus Christ. Because capacity will always introduce me to greater dimension. Mm. The Bible says uh, the disciples come to Christ when he was ministering to crowds. They said, number one, we are in a remote place. This place is not able to supply for the people that we have. Number one, there are no shops around. Number two, even if we were to use the money we have, it will even take, not even a year's wage will be able to feed all these people. But then they bring the fish and they bring the bread. The difference is they, 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 Christ says, look, this is something that is small, but let me show you how the kingdom works. You cast the fish and the bread in the hands of God. Then God begins to multiply. He blessed the bread and the fish. Then he said, bread King. He broke those things and those things multiplied and they begin to satisfy everybody around them. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. When it's planted, it becomes the biggest tree of all plants, of all plant what, trees. You might have the smallest of the smallest vision that doesn't make sense, but plant that vision, plant that ministry, plant that business, plant that oka sota, metoko sakala masaya. You might be believing God to get married trusting God for finances and finances are not coming. Get married anyway and trust God for the next level. You'll be surprised at the ability of God to push you to greatness. Let me give you this example, this prayer, and we're going to pray. There was a time whereby, I know some years ago, I normally use this example because it blesses me every time I think about it. There was a time some years ago when I first started working, I was earning uh, very little money. And I moved in into this house when I was renting it at the time, very empty. And I said, God, before the end of this year, and I realized that ah, I was so irresponsible with my prayer. I wish I prayed even for greater things. But anyway, my capacity of faith allowed me to pray for those things. I said, God, number one, I'm trusting you for a proper bed. Number two, I'm trusting you, Father, for a proper TV. I'm trusting you, Father, for a proper sound system. I'm trusting you, Father, for couches. I'm trusting you, Father. I named all those things. And I realized that these are beyond what I am getting. My salary could not get me all these things, even though I was to save. Not even half of those things I was going to get. The moment I declared, I said, Lord, I thank you that you're filling this place. And I started going to every room. I said, Lord, I declare that in this room there is a bed. I went to another another place. I started declaring. I said, Lord, I declare that in this room there's a TV. There's a TV stand there. There are couches here in Jesus' mighty name. I started going to the kitchen. Lord, there's a fridge here. Oh, la basaya. There's a microwave here. I declare and I decree. Father, as I buy this fridge, supply of food will be enough in Jesus' name. Imagine if I went outside and I prophesied to that shelter that was there and said, Lord, even a car, I'm trusting and tr trust me, I was going to get a car. But let me tell you this. The following week, I received such a remarkable influx of finances and I was able to buy things. I started buying things even before the year ended. All those things I had declared and prayed for, God supplied for me. What am I saying? Before you engage in any new level of your life, create capacity. What are you creating as a demand for the heavens to respond to you? The woman with the issue of blood, she created demand. And that demand was based on her faith. Her faith says, I am demanding a portion of healing from the heavens. She touched the garment, yet Christ did not see her physically, but there was very virtue that came out from Christ. Christ felt it because faith will always create a manifestation from the kingdom of God. So faith 
is the capacity of how far I see God calling me and blessing me. Now, God is saying now, faith is the only way to please him. Faith is the only way to bring manifestation. The biggest frustration that Christ had with the disciples was the lack of faith. I need to get into place of faith. What am I believing God for tonight? What am I trusting God for tonight? Faith is my capacity. Faith is my currency. Faith is my buying power. Faith is that voucher I have from the kingdom. I keep on filling it. Yeah. If I'm believing God for 5,000, God says in that 5,000, you need to start creating your faith for 5,000 rands. Start praying prayers that address 5,000 rands. Ela basunda. Oh, yasaya. And let me tell you something that about, 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 about faith in capacity on how it works. Faith also works in principle. I, I am a suya. Faith also works in principle. Let me say and repeat that again. Faith also works in principle. There are certain things that I need to start doing doing that testify to the capacity of be believing now paul speaks about finances especially in the book of corinthians about uh, about about shikabaso mindo sakalamanda about the grace of giving he is actually saying that now the place of giving will always create a place of a release he's saying that after you've given then god will make all grace abound towards you having all that you need at all times so that you can abound in every good work so in principle i need to start saying if i'm believing god for finances i need to be a giver i need to be a person who is giving because now the more i'm giving i'm activating a realm of believing and a realm of faith and a realm of saying lord i am in partnership with you and i am trusting you for an influx i don't just believe for certain things without creating a demand i need to create a demand what is it that you have in your house are you willing to plant it are you willing to release it are you willing to run and create a capacity create a capacity you need to create a capacity around you start shopping for a car not because you can afford a car but because you believe Go and see it over and over again. So what does faith do in that space as a principle? You always expose yourself to the thing you're believing God for. You're feeding your spirit man to create room for a release. You, you know that you do not have money to buy the car, but you're always going at the garage, looking at that car. You even you even test drive it, not because you can afford it, but what are you saying? You're actually going to feel the smell of that car. You're actually going to occupy your mind and your faith around a release. Hey, come on, somebody. You cannot say you're into business and you're always in your house, not traveling. Attend different seminars. Spend in principle. Go to places of empowerment, places that will challenge you. You can't say, I want to open a restaurant and you don't go and try out different restaurants because there are restaurants when you go to, you feel intimidated because the more you expose yourself to those places, you're creating a demand in your heart. You're creating an unction of the spirit. You're creating a release of the anointing. You're creating a push. Those who are in ministry, you need to also get into a pressure bank. If you have not seen a harvest, start seeing other servants of God who are expanding. Hey, one of the principles that I always kept in heart at all times is that now when I see a great ministry and I feel a testimony in my heart that this is a great ministry, I always give in into that ministry. I always take seed and say, Lord, I'm trusting you. This is an inspiration. You are working in this place. Wherever the Spirit of God is working, I always want to be there. I always want to feel the atmosphere. The more I expose myself to that atmosphere is the more my heart is filled with faith. Faith is a working progress. It does not only come overnight. You always create a space. You always create a capacity. You always create a space to receive from the Lord. And without that capacity that God will enforce around you, you will not see much of God's glory. What am I saying? I'm saying that now, create a space of demand. What are you believing God for? Because faith will also need perseverance. What are you believing God for? What are you trusting God for this evening? What is it that you're trusting God for? Start traveling. Start going to different places. Ooh. 
in principle, you expose yourself to what you're believing God for. One of the biggest things is the word of God. Dive into the word every day when you wake up. Dive into the word. What is the word of God saying? Fill your heart with the word. Fill your heart with revelation knowledge. Fill your heart with aim. Because the more you fill your heart with, 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 with the word is the more you've got faith. The Bible says one man brought his son to be prayed for. The disciples could not deliver the son. And when he brought him to Jesus Christ, he delivered him. And the disciples later on asked them, asked him, how were you able to deliver him? And he says to them, this can only come through prayer and fasting. What was he saying? He was not actually saying that now you can rebuke this demon through prayer and fasting. He's saying the problem is your faith. If you are to deal with your unbelief, you need to feed your faith in prayer and fasting. You need to expose yourself to capacity capacitate yourself in faith if you feel a lack of discard if you feel a point of discouragement it means there's a point of lack of faith in you we are not called to dwell in unbelief we are not called to dwell in warring we are not called to dwell in a place of lack of faith we are called to dwell in a place of faith because faith is the currency of releasing the heavens there is no man who can speak prophetically with conviction and boldness unless they have capacity that is created in them and they believe that as I speak in this space, God is going to do and God is going to answer. The simple thing God is saying this evening, as far as your eyes can sing, it's as far as I'm going to bless you. Go and borrow many verses as you can and I'm going to bring you to an outpouring. Keep on seeing that God is able to bless you. Uphold that knowledge of God's power over your life. Never, never at any time get into a place where you undermine the power of God upon your life. Get into a place at all times. What do you see, River Life TV? What do you see, River Life TV? See nations, River Life TV. See nations, see nations and declare and say nations receive River Life TV in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare and say we are your servants as River Life TV. We see each, we see our ministry in, in Thailand. We see our ministry in the US. We, you see you are creating you are not yet in those spaces but in your prayer place you are creating it. Madoske, Mimbrodoska, Matura Deste, Mabrata Kastoko Breten, Manda Baskuda, you started ministering, only one person is coming every Sunday. One day they even call you and say, Man of God, I want to come, but I don't have money to come. Please send money. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes you'll do things, and trust me, there's going to be a, a sense of uh, am I doing the right thing? But keep on pushing it anyway. Because you understand I have capacity. I might be receiving one person today, but I'm going to decline decree. From one person, two people are going to come. From two people, ten people are going to come. From ten, a thousand will begin to come. The whole idea is I need to get started. I need to place myself there. Because God says, if there are no vessels, there cannot be an outpouring. What is it that I must pour into? Create a space for God to bring an outpouring. Create a space for God to bring a release. Create a space of God to create the supernatural. Don't speak like a carnal person and say, I am waiting for money to do one, two, three, four, five. Re get rid of that language. Start creating a space. Start creating capacity and say, I'm believing you for millions. I'm believing you, Father. You declare, hey, solar brother. You declare, you declare, you create space in prayer. You create space in prayer. Masuya, I am called for this. I am a man of God. I'm called for nations. I will preach to many people. Hey, you have anointed me with grace. You have anointed me with the grace of expansion. You have anointed me in the name of Jesus Christ because the language of faith. It's not the language of calculation. It's a language of revelation knowledge. It's what has been released. In the heavens, it's already budgeted that you're going to start a ministry and you will receive a provision. And I want to declare it this evening in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever you used to sing, may God bring you back into a place of seeing. Don't ever see failure. Get into a place where you see the power of God at work in your life. Get into a place where you 
seek God, bringing you to possibilities. The whole thing is create a place of possibilities. Create capacity to receive. Create capacity to receive and see the power of God created. Start prophesying to those books that you have written. Start speaking to them and say a people and a generation is waiting to read these books. A people and a generation is waiting to receive my ministry. Start speaking to that ministry and say people of many nations, different languages are waiting to bring this place to come into my business, to buy from me, to actually trade from me. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus Christ Christ. Start speaking into your gift that God has given to you and say, I will present this gift before princes. I will speak to kings. I will speak to presidents in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I will be brought into realizing the power of God. That's how you create capacity as far as your eyes can see. If you see a bit further as one kilometer, that's how God is going to give you. Start expanding you. Start expanding your sight and say, Lord, in your word you said, if I ask for nations, you will give them to me. Today, I'm declaring Namibia has been given to me. Swaziland has been given to me. South Africa, Zimbabwe, Nikoseke, Lamanda. You know that you don't have money to even go to those nations. But some, somehow you have a conviction. Some, somehow you have faith. You have capacity that says it shall come to pass. This too shall come to pass. You don't see it now, but in the spirit realm, you see it and you bring a testimony you start speaking it in the spirit I am heading to my breakthrough I'm moving to my breakthrough I'm moving to the next level of my season I'm about to see the power of God I will not allow myself to be calculated I will not speak from doubt I will not speak from denial I'll speak from conviction my conviction says God will bless me God will establish me God will elevate me God will increase me God will expand me God God will stretch me. God will push me and shoot me. God is going to give me wisdom. God is going to bring me before kings and princes. God is going to bless me with that car. God is going to bless me with that house. I have capacity. He's going to bless me with a good ministry. I will speak and I will not shut my mouth. The enemy always pushes you out from prayer because in prayer, it's a place of speaking. It's a place of being able to speak. The more you don't pray is the more you do not speak. So the enemy does not want you to pray. That's why every time you want to pray, you feel discouraged. You feel tired. You feel like you cannot push in a place of prayer. Hence, God had to separate Abraham from Lord and say, look, now that you are alone in prayer, you need to be alone where you'll be able to now start speaking and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that in you there is no failure. I know that in you there is no impossibility. I know that in you, you're all powerful. You can do exceedingly, abundantly above what I think or can ever imagine according to the power that is at work in my life. And this evening and this time, Father, as I'm praying in the place of prayer, I want to declare and decree and say, Father, this community of Midrand is mine. Hey, you declare. You declare, you declare and say, Monster Loss is mine. Tabasoto, Robert Dal is mine. Pulukwane is mine. Oh God, I know that some, somehow I don't have money. I don't have land. But today I have it. I receive it. It's mine. Fukudaya, I am not waiting for money. I will allocate the land. I will see the land. Father, you see that corner, that corner house, that corner land that I've acknowledged and identified, it's mine. Start speaking in prayer. If you do not pray. You're not exercising your privilege to speak. Speak it in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout it in the name of Jesus Christ. Son of man, what do you see? May God open your eyes because what you see is what you speak. You may be seeing the dry bones, dead bones, but God says, prophesy. Your city can be dry. The economy can be dry, but God says, prophesy. Prophesy in that place. Let me give you another testimony that God is allowing me to share. I once pastored a church in Hamaskral. Those who are from Hamaskral or those who know Hamaskral, there's a mall called Jubilee. 
I think it was built around 2010, 11, 12, if I'm not mistaken, around 2011, if I'm not mistaken. And there was someone who had released the word that that mall will not exist because uh, some somehow they, I don't know what, for what reason. But now I remembered a scripture because at the time, people of Amam's class, they will know the history. At that time, the more they were digging in that land where Jubilee Mall is, there were stone rocks, big rocks that were coming out. And that somehow, somehow nearly stopped them from building that mall. And then people were saying, no, this mall, there's someone who spoke against it from, it from it manifesting. And I remember the scripture in the book of Jeremiah 29. The Bible says in the, to people who are in exile, God said to them, build in the city, take your children into marriage. But there's something God says. He says, pray for the prosperity of the city. If it prospers, you will also prosper. Then I said, Father, the economy of this place is important. There are many people who are believing you for a job. They must provide for their families. Father, we pray and we declare that this mall will come. It will be erected. It will be established. I pray and I declare in Jesus' mighty name. Every time I was passing that mall, I will speak the scripture and say, in Jesus' mighty name, it's going to come up. Oh, Shakata Masanda. Every limitation, every stoppage is gone. It's not going to stop the blessing of the Lord in this place. We receive grace in Jesus' mighty name. I'm telling you, within a month or so, they were able to level the grounds and the mall began to pick up. It began to keep pick up. What is it that makes things to pick up? It's when you have the ability to come into a place of prayer and start speaking around your atmosphere and start speaking. The problem you are not speaking. Your speaking is a revelation of your capacity. You speak according to your capacity. The centurion man said, look, I'm a man in authority. I say to this one, go, and to this one, go, and they listen. But in this realm of healing, my man who is sick and lying on bed, I don't have authority, but I understand that my faith is enough to create a release of healing. He understood his limitation, but he also understood a realm of faith that will bring and enforce an invading of grace from the heavens. He says, only speak a word and my servant will be healed because Christ says can I come with you but he says no only speak a word and my servant will come speak a word man of God speak a word woman of God speak a word speak a word speak a word over your, your children's life speak a word over your wife speak a word over your husband speak a word over your ministry speak your, a word over that bank account declare and decree and say you will never be empty you will never run dry you will be in high capacity. What are you doing? You are speaking according to your capacity. If I don't have enough capacity, I will speak to the little. But the Bible says even a small faith, as little as a mustard seed, is able to move the mountains. Ah. Sometimes I don't have to fight for greater high faith. Even that small, small, small mustard seed faith has the ability to bring down the mountains. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Declare it. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. We're going to speak God's word. Tonight, I'm believing God for 20,000. Personally, I'm Billy, that's that's just a, a, a tip of the iceberg. It's a beginning of where I want to go. But I'm believing God for 20,000. I'm believing God for 20,000. I'm believing God for 20,000. I am believing God for 20,000. Oh, yeah. It's not the whole. I'm believing for more. But, Father, I'm standing today and say, Lord, I'm believing you for 20,000. I'm trusting you that it's going to come somewhere. Something's going to happen. A, a supernatural occurrence will release it my way. You see that you are, you are activating because you have created a room to say there are things 
that I am believing you, God. And these things are, are, are mounting up to 20,000 rands. And Lord, I'm trusting you that this is my capacity for tonight. For tonight, I'm trusting you for 20. In fact, let me raise it even higher. I'm trusting you for 100,000. In the name of Jesus. Actually, let me even, even take it further. I'm trusting you for millions. Oh, yeah. I'm trusting you, Father, for millions. I'm trusting you, Father, for resources. I'm trusting you lord for sound system i'm trusting you lord for facility i'm trusting you for grace as we do the prophet you see that you are creating capacity you are bringing a testimony of the holy ghost because god first testifies in your spirit the more he testifies in your spirit is the more he creates a, a, a capacity because you are testifying from what has been said from the heavens you have been in prayer and you have been praying you have been fasting and seeking the word of god and god has been pouring the word and god has been planting the word god has been telling you of your future then you get uh, beyond and your prayer room and you start speaking and you start acting on the word you start moving into territories you start living places of limitation you start living places of no value you start pursuing that place you start going to places where you believe god is going to plant you you know you're just a nobody who comes from this poor background but the difference is you're no longer a nobody you're of royal capacity you're of the kingdom you have been released in the place of the kingdom you've received the kingdom in its full measure and you speak according to your capacity men and women of god this evening what is your capacity hey your capacity will always reveal your language your language is connected is connected to your capacity i will never speak beyond my capacity i speak to my capacity what i know can either break me or make me what i don't know it's more dangerous than i think that's why i need to dig deeper where i understand deep calleth unto deep i need to dig deeper in god i need to go deeper in god i need to press deeper in god i need to press in the more i press in the more capacity is created in me if i don't press in no capacity is created in me eh I need to press in. And this evening, we are going to press in. 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 We are trusting God that next week by this time, there will be great testimonies of his word. Come on. We are trusting God that next week by this time, there will be great testimonies. Am I speaking to someone this evening? I am Messiah. The someone who said, I'm believing God for 10,000 is too small. Increase the amount, men of God. Increase the amount. Increase the amount. Increase the amount and believe. Increase the amount and believe and trust God. And trust God. And trust God. Vicky Zoda. There's someone who's trusting God for a job. Uh, trust God and be more specific. Don't just say, I'm looking for any kind of a job. Just be specific and say, Lord, this is the kind of a job that I'm believing you for. These are kind of benefits I am trusting you for. I'm trusting you that, Father, indeed, in Jesus' name, these are the things that I'm going to get in the name of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mashaya, be specific. At that time when I prayed for all those things I prayed for, imagine if I prayed for my own property. Imagine if I prayed for a car. Imagine at that level how God was going to embrace me and bless me. My capacity of faith is increased in prayer and in the word of God. And this evening, I have the privilege to go back and write down what am I believing God for? Write down how far your ministry can go. Trust God on how far he can bless you. Shando. Believe him. Believe him. And God is going to raise reverence. And we're going to pray just briefly. We're going to pray a prayer of conviction. Ayanda, if, if, if you're in this place and you don't have a problem with sharing on the comments what you're believing God for, please do go ahead and write it down. There's going to be an atmosphere of grace. If, if you're not comfortable with that, it's okay. Write it on your journal. Write it on your notepad. Write it somewhere. Write it down. Write it down and write today's date. Say on the 9th of March, I am believing God for this much. 
I'm believing God for millions. I'm believing God for 10,000. I'm believing God for 20,000. I'm believing God for facility in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Lord Cross, Zete Amanda. I'm believing God to establish a ministry online. I'm believing God for facilities. I'm believing God for resources in the name. You see, you do that. You write it down. You, you write, because I'm creating an atmosphere that you must believe. You write it down. Write it down because there is a supernatural effect of power that is going to meet your expectation because when you have put it out there the demand is created and god is going to bless you don't just say father if only i can just have a, a two-bedroom house for now i'll be fine just declare and say lord i, I know that you're going to give me a five-bedroom house i know i know i know i know i and i believe you and i thank you in Jesus' mighty name, we declare complete healing on your body. Karen, we declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. Be thou made whole. In Jesus' mighty name, we break the spirit of infirmity in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we declare you healed completely. In the name of In Jesus' mighty name. We need to believe this. We need to believe, Bazalan. We need to trust God this evening. Yes, Sakamanda. And be you are believing God for a car and financial breakthrough. Tepang. God bless you. I declare and I decree a blessing upon your life. Makruze keila brasaya. Mendoze yamaya. Oh, God works miracles for you. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Madoske abrase ke amanda. Menokosa kalabakosaya. Oh, yes. We're believing God with you. We believe him. Matole besaya. Death, salvation, and eternity. CHR. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is done. We release grace. Hey, we are Kayo so commander Yasia me reku Zakaria deselemeda. Woo, Shamanda, yes, and we declare and decree Yenda Suka the hundred and twenty thousand retainer Musa Lose Kaya in your business in Jesus' name. God give you strategy and wisdom to increase Matora Basekara Basaya in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Christopher. Oh, yes, I love that in 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 US dollars in US dollars. Madoske de Salamanda Skeri. May God create possibilities. May God increase you to that measure. May God expand you. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you. I believe God for clients for my website design business. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree. God expand you. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we declare. Mando sekele mashanda uyadaya. Woo, Shemana Mashaya. Believing God for 100% funding for my son at UP, University of Pretoria. Bongiwe, we declare upon your life grace. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we think or can ever imagine according to the power. Oh, Sekadabasko Brakadaskeledasa. In a Messiah, we trust God for financing. In Jesus' mighty name. Mandabasakala Messiah, we bless you, Hazel. Yele Messiah, may God enlarge your capacity for wealth and kingdom financing awaits. In Jesus' Name, I declare Masokolo Moshaya increase in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me pray more specifically for them. I want to bless every person in this house. Yes, Innocentia, we bless you with the house and I declare financial breakthrough. I pray for everybody in this place who's listening in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bless you, men of God. I declare that the land is coming. Bless you, men of God. Mandalunyundu, financial breakthrough is coming. A car is coming and more resources for ministry. May God increase your capacity. Capacity. Sakaya Messiah. It's coming. It's coming. Mando Sekana Messiah. We release a grace on everybody who's believing you, Father, this evening. Father, we place our faith in that agreement to say we are going to experience the supernatural power of God. We are going to bear testimony on the 9th of March in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a day of, of understanding the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God that will enable us and bring us into that place place of a release in Jesus mighty name raise people of father for your people raise people cause favor for all those who are in need 
Mandez of Sakaya Messiah, Jesus Christ, Lord, pray them in the book of uh, Luke, John, in the book of John, chapter 11. After Lazarus was already dead, after four days, he went by the tomb and he said, I am not doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for the sake of these people, so that they may know. Lord God Almighty, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I am praying this evening. I'm praying as your servant of God, whom you've anointed with the grace for breakthrough. You have anointed to speak breakthrough in people's lives. Father, this is part of the ministry that you've given us. Father, I'm praying in Jesus' mighty name, do it for the sake of your people, so that they may see and experience your power, so that they can bear testimony at the doings of the Lord, and come back and say, see what the Lord has done, and give glory unto you. Someone is believing you, Lord, for the land paid up cash. I declare it is done. Some is believing you, Father, for a house. Hey, they're believing you for a car. They're believing you, Father. Your word says, ask, and it shall be given, so that your joy may be complete. Complete that joy this evening. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mado celebre que suya. Bredo sakama mama mama sumbada. Bredo sokula masanda. Tembegila, we speak dead cancellation. Mandelo kosikana mashikana mande ya suya. Iraba kasanda. We declare, Father. Thou your grace of resurrection. Ranama sokola masukola basanda. Bring back to life, O Father. Bring back to glory and abundance this evening. We declare and we decree. We speak it forth in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. You will testify. You will speak of God's goodness. In many a times, we are always discouraged of praying on the needs that we have. But God is more than willing to give you the things you desire and you believe God for. And this evening, we have come in one agreement to say God has done it. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. It is done. It is done. The Lord, and and, and, and look, after such a prayer, some of you, God will give instructions on how you get to the breakthrough. Some of you, God may command you to give. Do not hold back. Don't look at, maybe I've got little money, just release. Some of you, God may challenge to go to a particular place. Some of you may be challenged to restore a particular relationship. Because certain relationships will bring you to breakthrough. Some of you will just just hear God releasing you to a particular place. Don't hold back. Listen to the Holy Spirit because the next level of your breakthrough is determined by an instruction. Wait upon the Lord at what next? Some of you, a breakthrough will just happen. Will just happen. Will just happen. You just, you just receive a promotion from nowhere. Nothing, nothing. You have not applied. You have not done even an inch. But God will just shower you with grace. Hey. We pray and we declare. Such a blessing in Jesus' name. May the Lord richly bless you. Let's let's meet again to tomorrow as it's my last day. And also we continue from Monday forward. But tomorrow let's trust God for more as we seal uh, my sessions. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you so much for staying with us until this time. Uh, over to you, my host. God bless you, Karen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Over to you, my host. Ayasadrasiyalabayanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Oh God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. There's just grace for breakthrough. There's so much grace for breakthrough. There's so much grace for breakthrough. There is so much. I I want to speak to you guys and just speak more specifically. Don't doubt this moment. Reach out to the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust that the heavens have responded. The cloud is filled. It is about to rain. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen.
Let me just end there. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Shalom. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you could just take a minute just to thank God for the release that took place today. For all we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, your words praise and all things which is given. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For every breakthrough that Thank is you for what has taken place. It is irreversible, O oh God. You, it will not go back without fulfillment, without completion. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah, we believe God. Hallelujah. For everything that has taken place today. Yeah. For the release that has taken place today. We thank God for breakthrough that has taken place today in the name of Jesus. We thank God for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. These bones shall live in the name of Jesus. The bones shall live. The bones shall live. The bones shall live in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know, so many, so many scriptures in the word that show us the magnificence of God, the supernaturalness of God, the nothing is impossibleness of God. These bones shall live. Hallelujah. These bones shall live. That seemingly impossible situation in your life will change. Yes. It's not impossible. It just looks like it is. It just seems like it is. It will change. It will change. The Lord did say all things are possible to him that believes. He did say with God, all things, that is everything with the exception of nothing, is, is, is possible. All things are possible. Don't allow your soul to lie to you that this is a bit much. Maybe I can believe God for this, but this other thing is a bit much. Mm. Don't allow your soul to do that. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Christopher. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Don't allow your soul to to mislead or misguide you or to lie to you. Mm. Hallelujah. Because it might be it might find it hard to believe certain things because of past experiences. Mm. But minister to your soul. Minister to your soul. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Tell your soul that the word says all things are possible. Mm. Tell your your soul that the the bones shall live. Tell your soul that what seemed impossible is not impossible. It just seemed like it was, but it's not impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will experience that breakthrough. Whatever that you're believing God for, keep Mm. thanking him for it. The Bible says in all things, give thanks for this is the will of God for you. Mm. There's no way you can thank somebody for something they have not already done. Mm. And that's one of the things that faith does. It sees the future. Mm. Faith sees the end results. That's why the Bible says that God speaks the things that are not, that are, that are not as though they were. Mm. He speaks the things that are not as though they were. He speaks the end from the beginning. Faith speaks the end from the beginning. It does not speak according to what's happening now, but it speaks the end from the beginning. So keep believing God. Keep thanking God. Keep speaking uh, the word of God to those situations. Hallelujah. Keep speaking the word. 
Keep speaking the word. Keep speaking the word. One must bow. And it is not the word that will bow. It cannot happen. Hallelujah. We believe God for that. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Oh, thank you, Lord. We receive open doors. We receive we bless open you, heavens. We receive so those breakthroughs in the Lord, name of Jesus. We yes, thank you hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord. There will be an influx and an overflowing of testimonies yes, Lord, in your hallelujah. life. The Bible hallelujah. says that the lines are fallen unto you in pleasant, in pleasant places, places yes, and Lord. you have a goodly heritage. Yes, Lord. This mm. is for you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It shall be so in no other way. No other way. It shall be so in no other way. Oh, Jesus said, It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Mm. It is the Father's good pleasure. It pleases him to do yeah, this. Yeah. He does it with pleasure, good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Your prosperity you. is already settled. Ah, that breakthrough Jesus. the bible declares that forever oh lord oh. your word is settled in heaven yes, lord. god's word concerning you and your breakthroughs is already settled in heaven. Yes, lord. he's not thinking of it it's already settled mm, and you lord. will experience the manifestation yes, of it in yes, jesus lord. mighty name thank you lord. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah hallelujah oh we bless your name lord thank jesus. you jesus we bless your yes, name lord. king of glory Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just take one more moment, one minute? If you can lift up your hands, you, if Jesus. you can raise your voice, Lord, we give you glory. We honor you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, we Jesus. acknowledge, thank we you, recognize Jesus. what has taken thank place you, here today. Thank you, Jesus. What thank has you, taken Jesus. place in thank our hearts, what has taken place thank in you, our Jesus. lives, what has taken place Thank you, in Lord, the different every, areas of our of lives, oh God. God. Thank you, Spirit of Thank the living you, God, God the that your word is the substance. Everything released go through us, word today is the, the substance of what it, it has been spoken, you know, oh God. We receive it. We thank, thank you, you, oh God, Jesus. breakthrough has been released. Thank, we thank you, Lord, you, God, employment has thank been released. We testament. thank you, God, and that prosperity has testament. been released. We thank you, God, that and capacity has Christ been created. We thank you, Lord, you that faith has been strengthened in the, the name of, of Jesus. Word, Father, we exalt you, we give glory and honor to you, oh God. We bless your name, be exalted, King of glory. Be exalted, thank our you, Lord. You are Father. worthy to be exalted. Thank you, we thank you, Father. Oh, shut up, I did. We thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the Living God. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, God. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. Thank you, hallelujah. Spirit of the Living God. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sure. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. We are going to release you, family. Hallelujah. And as we do so, we just want to share once again, if you would like to take an opportunity to give to the ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Um, those are the details and... I'm not gonna say anything more. Yeah, we're not gonna say much. I think we're just gonna share them every night. Yeah. Without saying, you know, yeah. going into a preaching about operating. So yeah. the details are there. Um, if you would like to give to the ministry, you obviously will appreciate it. Um, pray about it. Hear what the Lord says. Yeah. And yeah, thank you so much for your time. Hallelujah. Um, God bless you. God bless you. We will see you again. Tomorrow, tomorrow, same time, same place. I know day number for 10, yeah. It's the last the day for Pastor Michael. Mm -hmm. And you know what a what a what a work God has done. Yeah. Hallelujah. What a work God has done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we believe God for those testimonies. Thank you so much, everybody. Sleep well and may God visit you in your dreams. Amen. Goodbye. Amen.